Today's garden video will explore the plant material and the plant combinations in Patty McGee's Sullivan's Island garden. Patty moved to Sullivan's Island in 2016, and even before her furniture arrived, she was hard at work reshaping a generous lawn area that was bordered by a few shrubs and trees into an area rug of turf grass with connecting walkways through deep borders that she filled with communities of plants. Today's garden scientists, lecturers, and authors have awakened us gardeners to the critical importance of planting our gardens with diverse yet culturally compatible groupings of plants. They explain to us the value of covering our dirt with living plant material in order to support the insects, pollinators, and birds above the ground, as well as the essential microorganisms underneath. Patty McGee has been doing this in her Charleston gardens long before its value was recognized. And with her thoughtful placement and her eye for design, we will today enjoy the harmony and the beauty that she has created. Let's have a look. In this section of Patty's garden is Malva's viscous or Turk's cap. This is goldenrod, which will bloom later in the season. It's usually a fall bloomer. This is ageratum. It's also a fall bloomer. It's native and it spreads. And this is Babticia, which blooms in the spring, but it gives it such a nice gray foliage and color, and it's a fabulous foliage to have in your garden. In this section of Patty's garden, we have Cuthia vermilionaire, and it is a very aggressive grower and flowerer. We have hedged it almost like um, a sh evergreen shrub to keep it under control and to mark the path which leads you to a, a gate. So it's um, one of the focal points of the garden. And it leads us to Verbena venensiaris, which is a fabulous pollinator. And it attracts um, all kinds of uh, butterflies. Its color is exquisite. And it, also in this bed is we have uh, sweet grass. She has the white and the pink. And it's a fall bloomer. So it's, it's in here and it'll give us a great show of color later in the fall. This section of the garden of the large border, the front border, is in more shade due to the overhanging branch of this um, beautiful oak tree. So the plant material has been selected to offer color, but mostly color from foliage uh, rather than from bloom. We begin with the variegated alpinias with the striped green and yellow leaves. Uh, we have several odontonemas in here which will bloom with that red spike flower, but not until the fall. They will bloom in shade. We have uh, some varieties of hedicums, which is the tall traditional gingers that we know. They are budded but have not bloomed yet. We have an acuba in the back there with the variegated yellow and green foliage. And as we come around, we see an occasional Turk's cap to pick where there is enough light for bloom. And a beautiful cultivar of bamboo that has that yellow uh, golden sort of uh, stem. And then next to it is a hedicium already in bloom with a stunning uh, orange flower. These are all very fragrant. And at the foot of the birdhouse, we have our traditional shrimp plant that uh, Charleston Gardens have been featuring for generations. We are now in the shade section of the big border under this stunning oak tree and with its low hanging branches. We're, we're looking at Odontonema stricta with the red uh, waxy like flowers that attracts the hummingbirds that we could not see in this garden back in June. This is a perennial that has come up and grown and is stunning in the fall garden. It is nestled amongst all these variegated gingers and the variegated um, uh, 
um, a cuba at the back. And you can also see a little bit of a cassia, which you know has those that enormous show of yellow flowers in a sunny border, but unfortunately this has become so shady that you lose a lot of the impact of these flowering perennials when they're not in the right sun exposure. In this section of the garden, we have more Baptisia, which is a spring bloomer, but it's it nestled among the Baptisia is a moss herons, which have a collection of succulents in them, and Patty can see them as she drives into her parking area. Behind the herons is a native Joe Pye weed or Eupatorium, which is huge. And it's been blooming for about two weeks now, and it's just really a spectacular plant. To the left of the Joe Pye weeds are another collection of Patty's daylilies, which she loves. And behind the daylilies are a native um, sensitive fern, which covers the ground underneath the Hamilla Patton. And you can see it spreads throughout the garden. And in this container is a alocasia, which adds such a focal point to this section of the garden. The center bed of the garden, which is in full, full sun, it has a backdrop of an Iliagnus hedge, and it has a centerpiece plant of a European fan palm, which is much more dramatic in the wintertime when there is less growth and, and lushness in the border. It, it, it provides a great anchor. In front of the European fan palm right now is a plant called uh, curcuma. The, the variety is Panama. It's a beautiful, large-leaved, um, in the ginger family plant with a deep burgundy stripe down the center of the leaf. The flower is bloom, blooms close to the ground, so it's not it's it's in the bed because of its foliage, not flower. There is there are a large variety of daylilies in here, part of Patty's wonderful collection of daylilies. There's also um, some canna lilies, all in this soft yellow, to offer a lot of bright. Uh, brightening when you look at the bed from a distance. Nestled in and amongst all of this uh, is more sweet grass to offer the fall show. There's a salvia amistad that is uh, blooming toward the center of, of the uh, side bed. And in the far distance, is uh, the native hibiscus, the swamp hibiscus with the red flower. And uh, slightly over from it is a dwarf variety of the Joe Pye weed or Eupatorium. So its height is somewhere in the three to four foot range versus eight feet of the uh, full sized Joe Pye weed. In this section of the garden, we have this beautiful Lord Baltimore hibiscus, which has been blooming for weeks and has given us a lot of joy to see every week when we come to, to work and, and look at this fabulous color. Also in this section is this salvia madrensis, which will continue to go. It'll grow. It'll get about um, six to eight feet tall and has a very soft yellow bloom. Also in here are other varieties of daylilies, asclepsias, more cannas, and sweetgrass. Anchoring the bed in the front is a candelabra cassia, which has returned from last year, and the foliage is so bold, and it just makes a spectacular statement. So this is the, um, the joy of this garden. You see the butterfly just hovering over the Asclepius tuberosa one of the butterfly weeds. And we have planted a, uh, a number of these in the garden, but they have multiplied and become such a jewel for their color, but mostly for the way they attract all this life, this pollinator activity in the garden. In this uh, part of the front garden at the foot of the steps leading up onto the screen porch where the sun is um, brutally hot and bright during most of the day, Patty has chosen to um, feature a collection of succulents. She 
has been a fan of succulents and an artist with the way that she combines succulents in various containers. And I think she may have been the first person to introduce the Charleston area to the succulent pumpkins years ago. Um, so she's worked some of her magic on these pots and it is one of the lowest maintenance sections of the garden. So Patty has worked her magic on the screened porch that overlooks the garden with a combination of lovely pieces of teak furniture and pots that she has a wonderful eye for finding and then planting appropriately. In the corner here we have a, lo a lovely collection of pots with plants that will take the shade and offer varieties of textures and leaf colors and intermixed with them are some of the art glass that we sold at Plantasia last year, which Patty was able to use so effectively in this little plant grouping. As you span the porch, you come to two uh, custom-made tables, which Patty has, has um, decorated with topiaries and lovely uh, collections of interesting pots. And then we go to the other end of the porch with another grouping of plant material of uh, different varieties of, of textural interest, um, uh, ferns and some of her wonderful clivias and palms and elephant ears. Uh, and then we get to the sitting area of the porch, which overlooks the garden in both directions and offers a wonderful perch from which to enjoy the garden and be in screens and away from the bugs of the beach. So as we leave the sunny front part of the garden, we begin to walk around the side. Uh, Patty has this lovely bench that she has nestled with different potted plants of various textures and forms to offer a backdrop of interest to the bench. And then as you uh, uh, wind around to the side garden with this uh, curved path, the foliage on either side of the path lend interest and particularly uh, are attractive from, when viewed from above where there is a seating area on the screen porch and the spot where most of the time the family gathers to have uh, cocktails in the afternoon and visits with friends. The foliage is a combination of uh, Mahonias, the, the wonderful soft caress Mahonia, maidenhair ferns, Blatilla, which blooms in the spring and adds a nice color. There are a lot of bulbs in this bed and varieties of Farfugium, as well as the wonderful and hard to find variegated Aspidistra. Along the edge of the path, it was Patty's idea to plant a number of the Evergold Carex in large swaths to add a punctuation uh, between different foliage textures, and it worked very well. Mm -hmm.